Uh, but for more on how these markets are moving this morning at the open, I'm joined by Ryan Payne. He's the president of Payne Capital Management. Uh, Ryan, it's good to see you from your remote location. And we see the S&P 500 nearing an all-time high. I know that you've been a big bull on these markets, but even at these levels, do you think it's a bit frothy? I think it depends on what market you're talking about. You know, back in March when you and I were talking, I was probably one of the only people saying that we were going to see a melt up. And we're actually here, Kristen, we're literally seeing a melt up in the markets. But if you start looking at the S&P 500, it's literally, if you look at the top five names, it's literally 23% of the index. I mean, big tech basically drives what the S&P does. And I'll go on a limb here and say, yes, that is actually getting a little frothy. And for me, you rarely hear that I'm a little bit uh, standoffish when it comes to any sort of market. <laughs> uh, but when you look at the overall market, I mean, man, there's so much room to move. Like if you look at those top quintile stocks in the S&P, they trade close to 50 times forward earnings. I mean, that's insanely expensive. Whereas if you look at the cheaper stocks in the S&P 500, they're more like 11 times earning, which is like, you know, really, really undervalued. Mm -hmm. So if you start to slice and dice up the market, um, you start looking at cyclicals, you start looking at the international markets, mm -hmm. you have some great opportunities to buy here. But I would really, really, uh, you know, urge you against just putting all your money in big tech and buying S the S&P right now is basically buying big tech. It's a good point. I mean, the NASDAQ down about half of a percent, the S&P 500 lagging behind the Dow up about half of a percent. But we know technology, a bigger and bigger proportion of the S&P 500 to your point, Ryan. So list some of those sectors where you're putting your money toward and, and which international markets in particular. Uh, you know, believe it or not, developed Europe, which we everyone hated Europe for about a decade. Um, but Europe's actually looking pretty good here. If you're starting to look at just the economic data out of Europe and even the emerging markets like China, uh, they were first in, now it's kind of like first out. You start looking at the PMIs, like the JP Morgan global PMI manufacturing numbers came in over 50, which means growth. So growth is reaccelerating around the world much faster. And even like Europe, if you look at their balance sheet, they're just not as leveraged as the US. Mm. So I have to think, you know, rotation there, which is already starting to happen, should continue. And also, you know, one thing we don't talk a lot about is just the dollar. Actually, we have talked a lot about is the dollar right now is just getting hammered, which is great for your overseas investments. It's almost like a kicker on top of the fact those markets are doing well because those currencies are starting to appreciate against the dollar, too, which, in my opinion, has been a, been a long time coming. So just like one of the reasons right now you want to be diversified, like if you start looking at dividend yields as well. I mean, we're literally getting a negative real yield on the 10 year treasury. It's crazy. I mean, people are actually putting or investors are putting their money into something that's negative yielding right now based on the cost of living. Whereas if you start looking at dividend yields, you know, going back to Europe, the emerging markets, I mean, you're getting like two, three percent dividend yields uh, value stocks here in the U.S. We start looking at cyclicals like financials. I talked about energy on your show three, four months ago when energy was trading at like twenty dollars a barrel. And you're talking about oil that's literally doubled since then. So all those places, though, have so much more upside here, and you've got to be putting your money there right now, Kristen. Let's talk about this vaccine news, Ryan, this morning. I mean, I think if this vaccine out of Russia was considered a viable candidate, one that Americans could actually take advantage of, we would be up 2 3 maybe even 4% on the Dow, but the gains relatively muted and we do still see a mixed market when it comes to the healthcare space in the US. Is that a space that you think is overvalued right now and how much of a potential vaccine or vaccines plural from different healthcare providers is priced in? Um, I don't think it's 100% priced in because it's not a sure thing. I mean, the news has been very good and I don't know about you. I implicitly trust Russia. That was a joke. Um, so I don't know. I mean, just the fact that Russia is indicating that there could be a vaccine, you can see what's happening with the market here. It's absolutely melting up before the open. But I think, you know, bottom line is if we actually do get a vaccine uh, from, you know, one of the Moderna, whether it's Pfizer, AstraZeneca, I, I think that's actually going to push the markets even further because right now it's an uncertainty, it's a possibility. But if you get certainty around that and markets look at around, you know, around 12 to 24 months into the future, you can just envision the economy getting back on full footing. And man, that is going to be so bullish. But it's not bullish for tech stocks, right? Because tech stocks are benefiting from the fact that we're kind of locked down right now. That, to me, in my opinion, has got to be a repricing for tech stocks down. But some of these cyclical names like I'm talking about, if you talk about like oil, energy, where people are going to fly again. Um, you look at manufacturing pick, picking up. 
all that stuff is going to be great for oil prices. And meanwhile, you start looking at the production side of oil. Um, we're down to like our lowest level in rate counts in years. So that supply demand is going to really get out of whack, which is just going to be great for any stocks or any companies that benefit from a reacceleration from the economy. And again, that's just not tech. But a tone of caution, Ryan, on tech. Interesting. Um, I do want to talk quickly about this payroll tax cut. President Trump uh, putting it out there, also a capital gains reduction, even though uh, Vice President Biden, who is also running for president, is proposing an increase in capital gains. How much is that potentially moving the market today? And do you anticipate uh, that we will see a change in that before the election? I don't know. I mean, I think it's great rhetoric for the election. I mean, believe me, I would love a lower capital gains tax. I would not argue with that at all. But I think it would be very, very hard to see that get passed before the election. I think it's good rhetoric. But I think it also speaks to the fact that, like, if you get any sort of tax benefit with stocks, along with the fact that generationally now you're seeing millennials, like, open accounts in droves on a lot of these platforms like Robinhood, E-Trade, you know, all these different online discount brokers, I think it's just a sign of the times, too, that you're actually starting to see a whole new generation get invested, which is just amazing for the markets over the next five to 10 years. Because if you look at the last 10 years, millennials didn't really get invested. Like, I have a lot of millennial clients. Either they sat in cash or, you know, maybe they added some monies to the market. But the market just wasn't the place to be. You know, real estate was a very popular investment for the last decade. Yeah. I see stocks like the hip investment again, like back in the so, late 90s. So, Ryan, let me yes. just jump in here quickly. I'm glad that you brought up day traders. I was going to ask about that next. But what are the risks? A lot of people have said, and maybe you were alluding to this with tech, that, you know, if we stay strong, if people stay invested in these markets, it could continue to grind higher. But what do you see as the potential risk that these day traders decide that they want to get out and that could cause a potential retracement in the major indices? Oh, they're absolutely putting their money in the wrong place. <laughs> you, know, you have new investors. They believe right now, statistically, that the FANG stocks are the best place to be for the next five years. And it's like that old Dr. John song. You know, I was in the right place, but at the wrong time. These stocks, they're great companies. They're the right stocks. It's just the wrong time to buy them. So that's also indicative of the fact that I think these stocks are way overvalued. And for these new investors getting in the market, be smart. Diversify your money. Don't just put it in big tech. It's going to be painful at some point. Remember back in 99, 2000, I lived it. It wasn't pretty, and history doesn't repeat, but Kristen, it sure does rhyme. All right, Ryan Lane down the hatchet. That's Ryan Payne. He's the president of Payne Capital Management. Thanks, Ryan.